Hi, intelligence is a rebellion as per Osho and in part 1 we talk about reflections on speak to us on love and here we are going to talk about the same reflection but imagine a reflection on a surface or a one reflection can create multiple reflections so in this particular session we'll be talking about freedom pleasure passion friendship and osho is going to disagree with khalil gibran on most of the parts and from ourselves also we are going to disagree with osho and gibran in some occasions as well so myself promise welcome to book.tips let's get started thank you work make your love visible that's the first one and what is work with love this was a question and it is to weave the cloth with the threads drawn from the from your heart even as if your beloved were to wear that cloth it is to build a house with affection even as if your beloved were to dwell in that house like you are creating your something for your beloved person or same other also for the cloth it is to sow the seeds with tenderness and reap the harvest with joy even as if your beloved were to eat that fruit like like similar to someone say having a hotel or a restaurant he they create a food something like they they are going to eat themselves so that way they will they will make the better things but for the other things like if you think about economics way like the butcher or the brewer who is doing his work somehow as per alfred marshall he is talking about in the wealth of nation is telling all these people are doing such things not because they want us because they want they have their own intentions they have to keep up their families and all but here it is talking about it is to your beloved one to eat that fruit it is to ch- charge all things you fashion with the breath of your own spirit and to know that all the blessed dead are standing about you and watching so all are watching on this one often i have heard you say as if speaking in sleep he who work in marble and find the shape of his own soul in that stone is nobler than who plough the soil we'll go detail on this one but is somehow telling that he who work in marble think that shape of his soul in that marble is more important than somebody ploughing just taking a metaphor there and he who seizes the rainbow to lay it on the cloth of the likeness of the man is more than he who make the sandals for your feet also a metaphor we will come to know that the, the the proposition of that metaphor but i say not in sleep but in an over wakefulness of the noon tide that the wind speak not more sweetly to the giant oaks than the least of the blades of the grass he alone is great who turns the voice of the wind into the song made sweeter by it by his own loving so somehow is telling that you put your love on things then you can make your love visible through work somehow that's what khalil gibran talking about now we'll talk about reflections on osho on that so first of all these are beautiful metaphors absolutely no disagreement on that but there are something missing here as per osho because if you remember in part 1 we talk about khalil gibran is not a full time mystic he is a half time mystic or or an occasional mystic so somehow osho highlights the poverty of the poet here because if you look at that it is to weave your clothes with the dawn drawns of that drawns from your heart as if will come across that your beloved were to wear that cloth so that somehow create a discrimination here because what is beloved because beloved means like maybe you will be loving somebody today maybe your friend or maybe something else some item but that is only not permanent some t- mostly your good enemy will be a one time your good friend so that that is lacking that meaning of the this gibran uh, is telling that make something that is as if your beloved were to clothe the cloth so that that lacks that intention same thing is going again create a house that your beloved were to dwell in that house 
also that is also same thing like you are creating something like mother teresa used to tell that i cannot create what you have you cannot do what i can do but we together can create something beautiful to god but here is telling that okay they are they are lacking that misery of the people they are telling that your intentions cannot be trusted until and unless you work for somebody beloved but osho is trying to tell no you have to there is, there is a little more enlightened position than that so osho talk about a believer in god after the child there is a person coming to osho and telling that i now become a believer in god previously i was not so osho ask why so he told me that he told him uh, that person told osho that uh, i just got a child i was not having a child for a long long time but now i got a child so now i am a believer in god so osho told what, what are are you are you so early doing that because what will happen this child is just maybe this child can die maybe something happen to the child so that moment you will change your faith on the god or belief in god so somehow that beloved and that is more temporary and all that's make, shaking that reflection of it is to charge all things fashion of breath from your spirit we don't have a disagreement there but he who work in the marble and find the shape of his own soul in the stone is nobler than who plows the soil this i think osho don't disagree on that particular plow the so- soil but i would like to disagree that the man who create food is more nobler than somebody who create stone because man who plow the soil is going to create the food for lot of people so you, somehow this comparison is degrading one thing which i should also talk about like there is no work which is less or more better somehow al mustafa or alil gibran missed that point here uh, there is a point talking about the abraham lincoln abraham lincoln when he was because he was a son of a shoemaker so one of the senator want to belittle him so he was trying a point that how come a shoemaker son become a president so he trying to belittle that this this point in a salad and abraham lincoln replied to that telling that i am very proud that my father is a shoemaker the point is he make much good shoes than me i don't even get that skill even though he teach me that so what i can proudly do is that if any of the people who have the shoes which is broken or something feel free to call me i will come to your home in my evening days and i'll fix it for you with an honor so that was the reply on that so that was highlighted here so but i say in the over wakefulness of the noon tide wind speaks more speakly to the jain dog such things are important here but most of the things missing in this one is its love is considering it has here as a business here like a bribe like a transactional way but when you are giving and taking that transaction you cannot completely call as love so that that's a point missing here as if also as if is not sure as if you are beloved where to wear the cloth as if you are beloved when to dwell in the house so that also lack that depth of the meaning and he's talking about blessed being alive and blessed being blessed being not dead because the poet is talking about all the blessed dead all all to know that that all the blessed dead are standing about you and watching so i should disagree here because most of the religions and other philosophy talk about uh you there is life after the or should tom how disagree but i don't know i just i'm taking the point as this as a disclaimer here maybe we put that disclaimer before also we are going to talk about the opinions of the poem we are not going to on book tour tips or myself will not be on that opinion we'll just taking that as a part of book review only so i should try to tell that there is no after death and all but somehow we take the point he's telling that most of the religion somehow i'm not sure it is religion maybe the religious whoever is taking that religions to people the priest and all this aristocratic team they try to put the religion in perspective that 
religion is renouncing everything or it's about punishment this is not the life you should live your real life is later so such point even though every religion even any any part of the religion you talk about christianity or islam or judaism or any religion that particular religion itself has multiple version of that religion so then that inherently give a question what is the true religion among that so if suppose if you go to one particular religion there will be multiple version of that so the point is that through that through that uh, days and days when it is transformed between different different people that essence of that religion has lost through its passage it happened to many religion i think almost all religion so that's why most of the religion on its very essence talk about go, uh, god appreciation gratitude live your life in a nice way all these things but whenever they take all this interpretation and this one there is always a possibility of two or three versions of taking that one and people stay on that so it inherently give a question who is right and who is wrong even one christian on one 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 section of the christian will tell we are the right people who is believe in god another person but inherently whoever is believe in god is believe in god that's the thing because bernard russell he is a famous atheist he talk about sin and punishment because he, he was famously for his many book god delusion and this uh, osho talk about why i was not a christian is talking about there because as per uh, osho i'm not completely sure about that osho is telling khalil gibran was initially islam then he was converted to christian same way bernard russell is talking about here we are bible talk about lot of sins that you, uh, if you do that you will go to hell uh, russell is telling that even i count all my sins all my 70 years and i go to the most difficult judge in the court he would only give me 4 years of imprisonment so i don't doesn't make sense to me on talking about the sins and this one and all these things so we'll stop there it's for your thoughts and this is the remaining section of the same thing about work work is love made visible we talk about this in another of our book review richest man in babylon and we talk about something over here because there is a book by francis silbine also so this second section is talking about if you cannot work with love but only with distaste it is better that you should leave your work and sit in the, at the gate of the temple and ta- take alms of those who work with joy so the point here is that this if you cannot work with love and you just work for your wages or pay or something like that then it's better you don't do that work it's better you leave that work and do something else but here the point which which did not demonstrate there by gibran but osho is telling the temple here is not the actual temple temple is the living temple or your own the the god is within you as per bible the kingdom of god is within you same like that the so bible is there sorry the the temple is temple is within you so leave your and sit in the gate of the temple so get sit in the gate of your soul and take alms of that people who work with joy just try to learn from people who work with joy if you bake bread with indifference you bake bitter bread that feeds half man's hunger hunger the point is that if you cannot put your 100% on one thing then you cannot get it like andrew carnegie and napoleon hill talk about enthusiasm on work because if you put something 100% on something you completely on that like what mihai chiksen mihai talk about flow state and all so you create that completeness on that don't hold anything with you because if you hold something like even now there was some research talking about like you can give energy to the things when you you can speak energy to the water and water will change a lot of things such things change so your actions and your your talks and your words everything has an energy to create something here so when you bake with indifference you bake a bitter bread if you grudge the crushing of the grapes you grudge the distills the poison in the wine 
so your energy on doing that will be there with that product whatever is that if your work is wine or something else that is going to stay so if you cook with love and if you cook like a normal person both of them may be following the same recipe but who cook with love is going to have that love embedded on that so if you sing through as angels and love not in the singing your muffles man ear and the voice of the day uh, ears to the voice of the day and the voice of the night so if you don't sing from your heart instead from your brain it will not be that much connecting to a person like when you speak from your heart is different from when you speak from your heart or when you look at something and just artificially you are talking about that so the book uh, also also talk about some people like saints who are like monks monks mostly like people find that to get enlightenment you have to just renounce everything so it's talking about indian culture we are talk about uh, saints who will not do anything just sit in the meditation and for moksha which is somehow osho disagree on that and one day you will seek the truth that we already come across that on the temple and all these things so that's a general overview of that particular chapter we'll go to the next innermost substance of freedom this is this talk about freedom and the orator said there is a diff- every chapter if you look at it each chapter it is very important who is asking that question here orator is asking about freedom because why is that because we are very much full of mouth regarding freedom we think that everybody have freedom i just want this that this is my freedom freedom is the most important thing here so orator is asking because previously as we think it's a question not a quest orator want to speak about it he don't want to enjoy it so al mustafa is going to shake that one speak to us on freedom and he answered at the city gate and by your fireside i have seen you prostrate yourself and worship your own freedom so i see you worshiping yourself you are bowing yourself on your own freedom which somehow you are you are like a slave of your thoughts you are you are just giving your brain and thought to someone else keeping even as slaves humble themselves before a tyrant and praise him through his slays them same as we talk and in the groove of the temple and in the shade of the citadel i have seen you the freest among you wear the freedom as your yoke and as your handcuff so whoever is thinking he is the freest among them i have seen you people there in the temples and this one so whatever you you wherever you think you have a freedom you are not actually having a freedom so somehow you are missing that perspective of the freedom and my heart bleed with me for you can only be free when even in the desire of seeking the freedom become a harness for to you and when you cease to speak of freedom as a goal and a fulfillment you will only get the freedom when you stop having that desire of having that freedom because when there is a desire of freedom that particular moment there is no freedom like somebody talk about money consciousness when you desire or want something then that generally create a lack of money there because whenever who have not then only they will think about they need something so that's a, you shall be free indeed when your days are not without a care not your nights without a want and grief when you have no past and present that is a moment when you don't worry about your old past and you don't worry about your future you still live in the present <clears throat> that is an absolute freedom but rather when these things griddle your life yet you rise above them naked and unbound and how shall you rise beyond your days and nights unless you break the chains with you at the down and understanding have fastened around you at the noon hour all these chains of perceptions and understanding and the culture and all these things vishal lakhan used to tell that rules and all these things like traditions conventional rules so you cannot rise above your life until you just leave this uh, handcuffs and uh, yokes around you in truth that which you call freedom is the strongest of these chains though its links glitter in the sun and dazzle your eyes 
whatever you just proud of or glittering there are most of the things is change for you even you come across religions and all these things the thoughts and all all the points every religion appreciate thinking about things but only that whoever take that religions to the people they try to stop people from thinking about it because they don't want to answer it but god want to answer it so every god every every religion if you look at it at its essence it seeks that curiosity and search and quest for the person to find the truth so in the osho's reflection here free from that we already talk about osho also talk about a bible story about adam and eve why adam and eve get out of paradise so that's a contradictory thing because all the literature or all the holy books uh, talk about god punished adam and eve but the question is as god is omniscient he knows past and future and everything he knows everything by himself the god whoever created adam and eve he already know that they are going to do this they are going to break this promise or instruction of god so that way punishing by a god is no it is just a blessing by god that was uh, what osho is talking about even the paradise it come from a arabic word firdaus that means that walled garden so he's telling you he want to just get this people from the walled garden into into the place on the earth and he want them to live there and enjoy their life and here talking about chains and all osho also talk about galileo and the fight with with science and uh, the church uh, church uh, not the religion i will not tell about religion or christianity because as in the christianity as when it is come through the people it get changed same happened with islam and other religions also so galileo have a fight because he whenever he told that earth is moving around the sun the the, the they call them the kings and the priests the the dominant people call them and tell that you have to change your opinion so somehow galileo don't want to be become some just get died he just tried to be political and tell that as per this particular team earth is uh, not revolving earth is static like that idol worshiping we already talk about that mirror you and freedom the absolute freedom if you want to worship someone or should you link go to a mirror and you see yourself worship yourself because you are the absolute appreciation of god giving to you and you are the blessing you are the freedom yourself freedom is within you take it from yourself also he criticizes about mahatma gandhi uh, because somehow osho's uh, thinking is uh, like that where he he think that gandhi is an hypocrite somehow we don't want to disagree but part of the option he's telling that he talk about bhagavad gita and he is telling that uh, that is all about violence and he's preaching that this is also a version of that but in my our opinion i would try to tell that it is not like that bhagavad gita is not completely talking because violence is part of that ups and downs of this one violence come as a part but when there is a fight happening and fight is happening for the cause that's what bhagavad gita is talking so it has lot of learning on that but somehow osho tried to crush that holiness of that book and telling that it is just a violence book and mahatma gandhi is speaking about that so you can take both opinion what i would generally tell is that on such things even though you follow a religion or something be keep an an open mind there will be lot of points about bernard russell talking about atheism and osho talk about this until and unless we keep an open mind and take opinion if you are afraid that that will shake your religion point of view that simply mean that your religion's point of view is not that as strong as uh to take if if such a thing can shake your religion then the, your faith is not that strong your understanding of your religion is not as strong as that so keep open mind take all these points and you can disagree and agree with that i'll leave it with you desire come as a harness i think we already talk about that we'll go to the next so next chapter is talking about reason and passion and this question is being asked by priestess a lady priest 
Speak to us of reason and passion. And he answered saying, Your soul is often times a battlefield. I think everybody will agree on that. Your soul will have a lot of conflicting thoughts. Upon which your reason and your judgment wage war against your passion and your appetite. All right. Would that I could be a peacemaker of the soul that I might turn the discord and rivalry of your elements into the oneness and melody. But how shall I? I will try to make it. But how shall I? Unless you yourselves be also the peacemaker. Nay, the lovers of all your elements. You can only make the peace. Quran used to tell that if you want peace, come to me. God is telling, come to me like that. So, you cannot find peace on getting on something or going something. Your peace is within you and God is within you. And appreciate that God and find the God and be in with God. That, that's a point. Buddha is telling that every man is a potential God. Your reason and your passion are the ruddler and the sails of your seafaring souls. If either you sails or rudder be broken, you can but the toss and drift, else be held in standstill in the mid seas. Somehow telling that both is really required. You cannot sail a, a ship by or, or a boat only by one side. That's, that's the point. For reason, ruling alone is a force confining. If only reason, it's a force. It's not a balancing thing. But passion is going to balance it. If passion is unattended, it's a flame that burns its own destruction. Even the fire, it can create a lot of good things. But the same fire can create destruction also. So there should be some limit on the things. Therefore, let your soul exalt your reason to the height of the freedom that it may sing. And let it direct your passion with reason. Let the passion be directed by reason. Like you can be passionate about something. Like you can be passionate about opposite sex or you can be passionate about anything. But your reason be passionate about that. Imagine that if you go to a shop and you get buy something. If you are passionate about something like an Apple iPhone or something like that. Let your reason direct your passion. That way you will become not cheap, you will become more frugal. Is it really needed for me? That is coming from reason, not from passion. Then when that reason directs the passion, then your passion may live through your own resurrections. You will live yourself like a phoenix bird, rise above its own ashes. This this. Metaphor has been used many where. Maybe you all know about this metaphor because Phoenix is talking about someone who is rising from your failure and all these things. I would have you consider your judgment and your appetite even when you would do loved guest in your house. That let that both live in your house of your own soul. That's what he's telling. Like let reason and passion be more there. It should not be in conflict. And Osho telling is that man as an organic whole. Because everything what man has, there is a reason for that. You don't have to renounce your passions or pleasure and live like that. No. Everything is there from all the emotions, all the chemicals, everything happening around you. It has a reason for that. Frederick Nietzsche and the will of power is a famous philosopher Frederick Nietzsche is talking because Khalil Gibran has a lot of influence from Frederick Nietzsche and is a philosopher uh, who was being criticized as mad because of his philosophy because people have not been capable enough to get that point even Osho is some many places I think he's banned in many countries because of his philosophies and all so that may be one of the reason Osho is telling that Gibran take the name of Al-Mustafa instead of telling himself. If he would have tell himself that, I am telling this, he will either become or, or in both, it may be both, he will be same time somebody's people hold prophet himself or religious person. And another way he'll be called as mad and he'll be frightened by the religions like all the religion heads and priests and all. So that's what he's trying to tell. There is also a talk, a story about Panch Tantra. 
there we are a crippled man and a beggar a blind both of them are beggars but one blind, one beggar is blind other one is a crippled man he cannot walk much like that and they used to beg they were enemies that was the idea and one day they they live in the forest nearby so one day the forest got fire and everybody was worried about these people because one person cannot walk other person is not able to see so they are going to die in this fire but what the story is telling is that at some point in time they find that heat the the blind man feel the heat and crippled man see the fire they talk each other and telling the crippled man told that okay i can see the fire you can walk i'll so the blind man tell stand on my shoulder or sit on my shoulders and you guide me i will walk for you so that way both of them walk and they get out of the forest and they live together so this metaphor is talking about same thing reason and passion both is required passion may be something like a blind man but reason is something like a crippled man who can see the things but it cannot do it everything alone so you are the pacemaker here uh, peacemaker here or you just have to make sure that understand or live in yourself be in yourself go to your center or she's telling i am a mystic because i live in my center so the same thing surely you would not honor one guest above the other reason or passion for he who is more mindful of one loses the love and faith of both so both is required among the hills when you sit on the cool shade of the white poplars sharing the peace and serenity of the distant field and meadows then let your heart say in silence god rest in reason when you are having the peace and joy and all these things still in god rest in reason be appreciate that be grateful for that and be go with it and when the storm comes and the mighty wind shakes the forest and the thunder and lightning proclaim with the majesty of the s- sky imagine that it is a worst scenario on your life it's trying to take the metaphor then let us your heart say in love god moves in passion and since you are the heart in the god's pier and the leaf in the god's forest you should rest in reason and move with fashion passion It's telling that even in your adversities and even in your good things be grateful to god and find that there is a purpose god rest in reason and that is giving me the purpose god rest in passion when when your adversity is there when lot of adversity is come your passion about one thing is going to take you from that adversity and move forward if you have a problem in your business or in your work or in life your passion and hope for your life is taking that so god rest in god moves in passion there when another person when you have a comfortable scenario then your moving forward is also backed by reason so both is required both is part of the god sphere of influence and you are part of the god that's what it is so we almost talk about all of the things we'll go to the next friendship this was another chapter where we will have some level of disagreements here and the youth set why youth set you can think about it friendship is asked by youth reason and passion by someone else children was asked by lady marriage by lady you you see the things and rich man ask about giving and here youth is asking speak to us on friendship and he answered saying your friend is your needs answered something similar to our proverb like friend in need is a friend indeed but osho disagree and i would like to agree with osho as well this this leaves a point like there this is not a true friendship because you cannot have a friendship with a person because the needs are answered then that's a business that is more economical there but instead of friendship you should talk about friendliness because if you friendship with someone that sometime he will become an enemy also so in that point then you are actually not in friendship with that person but instead of friendliness you don't have an attachment or give and take or something your field is he is your field which you sow with love and reap with thanksgiving 
this is what this is not un like unconditional love instead it is telling that you sow and reap from your friend which also should disagree and i will agree with him. and he is your board and your fire side telling that it is your he is making your purpose fulfilled which is also not necessary the true friendship come when then there is no condition of that you just share that love and attachment and appreciate that person and the other person that's that is going to stay but the other one no it can have at one point in time you sow and you cannot get that reap backward your friendship will become your friend will become an enemy or you will try to detach from that person for you come to him with your hunger and you seek him for peace you are going to somebody also this is also like someone who is he is having a need it's not real love there someone is having a need and he is going there to fulfill it when your friend speak his mind you fear not and in your own mind nor you withhold and when he is silent your heart ceases not to listen to his heart for without words friendship all thoughts all desire all expectations are born and shared with joy that is unacclaimed when you are part of your friend you grieve not somehow that's a poem talking about mostly about what we think in a very beautiful way what a friend should be but there is a problem there because that friendship is not going to work because of the same business transaction osho talk about in bible and all ask and it is given osho believe in something like existence is abundant you don't have to ask i'm not sure completely we can take that point that way because bible is talking about ask and it is given you just don't have to be complacent maybe that's a the reason there but osho trying to tell that you don't have to ask you live in that flow you live and enjoy in that existence and existence or god or the infinite intelligence is that much abundant it will give it to you and bible also talk about knock the door to open you don't have to knock the door that's what osho is telling love is giving not getting we already talk about that and upanishads uh, talk about uh, in the same book about 11th child talk about a lady who let her be having 10 child and let his husband be his 11th child it's talking about a profoundness of such a point where after having 10 childs and then taking care of that your husband also will become a child so that way that caring and appreciation of unconditional things is going to sustain more even after they create all this child themselves for that which you love most in him may be clearer in his absence is telling that when somebody this this is right like when somebody is you love you can only appreciate his love when that love is absent otherwise you take it for granted as the mountain to the climber uh, climber is clearer from the plain and let there be no purpose in friendship save the deepening of the spirit this is a contradiction here see in previously Uh, Khalil Gibran is talking about sow and reap and this thing, but here he is telling no purpose. But previously they told there is a purpose there. For love that seek ought, but the disclosure of his own mystery is not love, but a net cast forward, and that's unprofitable is caught. Also same thing before. It's contradicting to his initial verses. So maybe he did not uh, read his draft. <laughs> maybe I'm just telling joke, but somehow. Osho tell is as a mystery of a poet because he is not mystic in centers on occasionally the person in him is coming back to the poem if he must know the ebb of your tide let him know his flood also and for what your friend that you should seek him with hours to kill seek always him always with la hours to live this is profound like the friend is not for some time because you have a time pass always to kill instead he is there to live your life or to to enlighten your life so don't take it as someone who is going to kill for it is his to fill your need 
but not your emptiness see again here there is again a need is coming previously talk about no purpose there was some purpose before now he's talking about fill your need that is also not the actual friendship will not work there even we call it as friendship that will not sustain it's not sustainable and in the sweetness of the friendship let there be laughter and sharing of pleasures for in the dew of the little things the heart find its morning and refreshed so this also talk about is like a pendulum of chibran which somehow i think you can feel that there is a change in the intentions and the needs no purpose and all these things we already talk about that open yourself and the let friend choose this the book is talking about don't show everything to the or the to the friends but osho is telling open yourself in front of him so that is the most easiest thing because let him know your all vulnerabilities all good and bad and let that that friend friendliness is going to stay and other topics i think we already talk about that so pleasure is the seed of blissfulness it's also a contradictory topic then a hermit a saint or or somebody so see another important person is coming and asking this a hermit because why pleasure is being asked by someone else because the hermit is someone who is renouncing the pleasure as per who visited the city once a year came forth and said speak to us of pleasure and he answered saying pleasure is a freedom song but it is not freedom pleasure is a freedom song but it is not freedom it is the blossoming of your desire but it is not their fruit it is a flower only because flower is not everything fruit is it is a intermediate state before the actual fruit is going to come it is a depth calling unto a height but it is not deeper nor high it is a cage taking the wing but it is not space encompassed in very truth pleasure is a freedom song and i fain would have you sing it with the fullness of your heart yet i would not have you lose your heart in the singing some of your youth seek pleasure as if it were all in the youth we follow the pleasure of lot of things on the drugs and all other parts feelings and senses we think that that's all the life and they are judge and rebuked i would not judge nor rebuke them i would have them seek for they shall find pleasure but not her alone seven are her sisters will come across that what is a seven and the least of them is more beautiful than pleasure have you not heard of a man who is digging the earth for roots and found a treasure the the point is talking about is all religions most of all i am not sure it's god is telling but the proponents of religion is talking about renouncing of almost all the things renouncing of i don't know whatever is all like money or all these things to enlighten you to reach to the god maybe one of the thing is because if man have all what they have they will not be going to a priest or something for praying and all these things because the god is within him he can enlighten himself and do that maybe that's a part and parcel of that business of i'm not talking about any particular religion almost all religions have this such sentimentality but if you look at that the true essence of that proponent of that religion even if it is any religion in the world it is not particularly telling that no religion is telling particularly that you should renounce something but osho is telling it's a spiritual suicide uh, one occasion is talking about a jain jain uh, monk he was standing on a stage with him or sharing in the stage and osho speak before the muni and he told that this muni is or after the muni sorry and the muni told that whatever this chandan muni told it is not correct he is a hypocrite he is not enjoying that thing and he is telling that things and chandan muni come back to osho separately and he told me that whatever you are telling is right i live all my life renouncing these things because there is 
two parts when you become the the moment when you get appreciated there is an appreciation is seeking by these people when you become a saint you will get lot of public appreciation and all these things so that way you will get lot of money and all so somehow you are renouncing something and you are getting pleasure from some part so that is making like the politicians interest to have power same thing is having the problem here also uh, another story mentioned by uh, osho is that there is a, a restaurant where buddha confucius and lao tse tung both three of them was there and when lady come to her a beautiful lady come to buddha and tell that you want to enjoy me so buddha is telling no what the hell you are talking about just leave away from my sight confucius is telling i can i can taste i don't want to renounce like buddha because to get everything i i will try to taste you half then i will decide because confucius philosophy is like that like everything in half Lao Tse Tung is telling that I cannot I cannot completely estimate a thing until and unless I completely enjoy that. So you see the differentiation between that. So pleasure and freedom is talking about it's not a synonym because mostly we think that pleasure is a freedom and freedom is pleasure but actually no it's two different things. Pleasure has valleys depths and heights that's true. you you cannot completely even if the most pleasurable thing even is the sweet to you eat or the chocolate you eat uh, whatever even your body the senses or your dopamine it has a peak on that after that it will not respond mastery is infection the point is when you have a pleasurable thing the mastery of a particular point is like you get infected by that skill and mastery of that and you seek pleasure on that so sufi mystic al hijaj mansur is talk also talk about the same person also one time is talking about enlightenment and all these things so the sufi tell that how i am not going to get free so sufi hijaj is talking this in a in a mosque so he just go to a pillar and hold the pillar and is tell that this is like this and uh, people were just panic about kahle judgment sir was just going because of one person question he just go to a pillar and he just do this, all these things crazy things so then at one point al hijaj is telling i cannot go from this i cannot go from this i'm i'm trapped here i'm trapped here like that so this person who asked the question he become very panic he go to al hijaj and tell please stop doing this so is al hijaj is telling this is what the situation of the human being they just tied themselves their hand on something and they feel that they are trapped there but actually they are holding themselves to that and another story because this chapter is full of story by osho is talking about a zen master a king is visiting a zen master when he is entering his ashram he see first a person who is just uh, doing something on the garden and doing the soil and all and cutting the wood and all these things so is the king ask where is the zen master are you the zen master so he told me no i am not the zen master so then he leave there and he go inside he see the same person there but he is setting as zen master so the king was confused do you have a twin brother on this so he told me no whatever i am living i am living in the totality there when i am a woodcutter i am 100% the woodcutter when i am a zen master i am 100% zen master that's it and late la- last part of it seven are her sisters is telling but not her alone is telling so seven are her sister osho is telling this one is uh, is like seven chakras of if you follow the tantra and all these things you will understand what is the seven chakras of the body starting from the ground chakra sacred chakra and uh, solar plexus heart throat so third eye and the uh, uh, spiritual on the top chakra crown chakra so all the seven chakras seven are her sisters also is telling that even the pleasure what we talk about sexual pleasure and all these things that's even below the ground chakra it is not even there so first three of the chakras ground sacred chakra and this one is talking about the self 
and the remaining is to the higher consciousness that's what osho is telling it's an interesting interpretation because i did not hear such an interpretation from another person so the remaining is talking about heart chakra is to getting it to outside throat chakra to get it enlightened seventh eye to even outside and spirituality the complete enlightenment so heart expression and third eye so that's how osho conclude that this is the 10th chapter of the book end of the book so thank you for joining please feel free to check the part 1 maybe as it become too long that's why we split it into two parts and we did not put that much energy to this one because you already have come across the part 1 but i'm sure this will connect to that part 1 to the part 2 so please go through it and please try to enjoy the book by the book as well and pick keep an open mind on this one until we come with the next book thank you for now bye for now